Matt here with Mobile Solar Consulting in Stewart, Florida. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to install our 24 volt pre-wired Victron DIY friendly kit. Before we get into how to install it, I do wanna talk a bit about who this kit is a good fit for, what all these components do, and what options you have when purchasing. I'm also gonna cover some of the frequently asked questions in that process. So first off, who is this a good fit for? We designed this with RV owners in mind. So for the largest fifth wheels, this is gonna allow you to fit 3000 watts of solar on your roof, no problem with just the factory wires, not having to run additional solar cables. And it fits quite well in the spaces available in a lot of the larger fifth wheels. It also fits quite well in the spaces we've found in most class B and class C RVs. Even the wheel well cabinets in a lot of sprinter vans and transit vans and ProMasters. So really, size wise, this is a good fit for just about anyone. The board itself is 34 by 18 high. The inverter, which ships separately but does come pre-wired, is 11 by 23. So you would need to mount the inverter and mount the board, and we'll show you what wiring you'd need to do within your RV. But everything comes pre-wired and pre-programmed, just like you see here. So once you turn it on, we would get a notification, hey, this system is online and we would be able to see your system and help you do any troubleshooting or setting changes you'd need anytime you're connected to Wi-Fi. So now for what each of these components do, let's start on the bottom here. This is your solar disconnect. You're gonna land your solar wires here, turn the solar on and off here, and this is your MPPT charge controller. So this is gonna take in the solar power and use it to charge your battery optimally. Down at the bottom here, we have our Serbo GX. This is gonna to connect to the touchscreen to show you the display of what's going on in your system, such as how much energy you're producing from solar and how much you're consuming from your inverter. It's also gonna play an important role in helping us to have access to your system. So anytime you are connected to the internet, this will send us information so we can help you troubleshoot or change any settings anytime you have questions. Moving on to the Orion charger. So this right here is a 30 amp DC DC charger. We also offer a model with a 70 amp DC DC converter. So there's a very distinct difference there. This is a charger for when you have a 12 volt battery still in the RV. The converter is for an RV where you're removing the 12 volt battery entirely. You would want to use the Orion Smart Charger and keep your 12 volt battery intact if you have a fifth wheel with hydraulic jacks. Those use a lot of 12 volt power, large slide outs, as well as a large 12 volt appliance like a 12 volt air conditioner. In those cases, you should not get rid of your 12 volt battery. If you have a smaller RV that doesn't have very large slide outs, it does not have hydraulic jacks, and you don't have a 12 volt air conditioner or any other very large 12 volt appliances, then you can switch from this to the 12 volt, uh, the 24 to 12 volt 70 amp converter, and that will allow you to remove your 12 volt battery entirely. So that'll help save some space and some weight for you. Moving on, we've got our Anderson connectors here. Our 24 volt battery is gonna plug into the one in front, which is labeled, and our inverter wires are gonna plug into the one in the back. We've got our smart shunt. This is kind of like our fuel gauge for our battery. It's gonna tell us how much percentage we have left. We've got our class T fuse. This is the main fuse protecting the battery wires. We've got our on off switch for the battery and our Lynx distributor. This is fusing all of the individual wires you see in the system. And there's a spare space left for an additional circuit to be added. We've also got, of course, our inverter. This is taking power from your 24 volt batteries and turning it into the power that you need to plug your appliances in in your RV. So options you have when purchasing, remember, 
batteries and solar panels are not included. So we sell those separately and we can definitely help you pick the right ones. If you're gonna use a 12 volt battery in series to achieve the 24 volts needed for this kit, remember to pick up a battery balancer. That's something we can add to your kit and help you with. We have models where you can select the size of the MPPT you'd like. The 250 volt, 100 amp MPPT is a great fit for somebody looking for up to 2,800 watts of solar on their roof. We also go all the way down to a 100 volt, 30 amp charge controller, which is a great fit for somebody looking for up to 850 watts on the roof. We already talked about the difference between the Orion 30 amp charger and the 70 amp converter. The other decision to make is the size of your touch screen. Do you want a touch 50, which is five inches, or a touch 70, which is seven inches wide? Those are pretty much all the choices to make when you're purchasing this kit. So now let's get into how to install it. First things first, we're gonna make sure the battery disconnect is off, which it is. And then we're gonna unscrew the two Anderson connectors that come screwed to the board just to secure them during transit. That'll give these a little more wiggle room and let us actually plug stuff in. Make sure our inverter is switched off. So we'll reach underneath of here and make sure the switch is in the middle position. Next, we're gonna make sure our AC input wiring is not live. So what does that mean? That means unplug from shore power and turn off your generator. Once that's done, you can plug your AC input wiring into the pluggable connector labeled AC input. So to do that today, I don't have an RV, but what I do have is this board. This board is going to be the items that you would already have installed in your RV. So this is the touch screen. You'll have to install that separately. This is your shore input. You already have that. And this is your um, 120 volt loads or your main panel, All right? So these are just to simulate what that would be like in your RV. Right here, I have the wire that comes from the back of our shore inlet. It could also come from the output of your automatic transfer switch if you have a generator built in. So we're going to install that into our AC output, our AC input plug. And as we do that, make sure to match up the colors on the plug. So black is going here. White's going here. And green is going here. Give the wires a quick tug, make sure they're snug in there, and you're all set. Notice that I do not have a red wire. This is because in my case, I've got a 120 volt shore plug. This is a 15 amp inlet. Also common on RVs is a 30 amp inlet, which would also be 120 volts. If you've got a 50 amp RV, then you will have all four of these wires. Now we're gonna insert our AC output wiring into the plug labeled AC output on the inverter. So to do that, I have my wires that come from this outlet. For you, those wires would go to your AC main breaker panel. So that's a wire that you would have to run throughout your RV from the inverter to the main panel. And again, same deal, I've got a 50 amp, excuse me, I've got a 15 amp set up today. So I'm only using three of these wires. If you have a 50 amp setup, you would use all four. Now that we've taken care of the AC input and output wiring of the inverter, we're gonna do solar next. So first, open up your solar disconnect and make sure it's turned off. Next, go ahead and take your solar wires, strip a bit off. and you're gonna insert them, hopefully these are not live while you're working, into the Wego connector. Making sure that you're matching up the colors on the bottom in line with the colors on the top. We've got black on the top and red on the bottom here. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect our inverter making sure it's still turned off. We're gonna take the RJ45 cable and plug it in to the bottom of the servo. That's gonna be the VE bus port. 
Now there's two VE bus ports here. Either of those would work. What would not work though is the ethernet port right there, which is something we commonly see people use. Now we're gonna plug in the inverter's power cable. That's gonna go into the connector in the back labeled inverter. Now for the 12 volt battery, I'm gonna connect the Orion smart charger to our 12 volt battery. Note that we include a 25 foot spool of 10 gauge wire that is pre-terminated with ring terminals on one end so that you don't have to crimp them and heat shrink them. I'm gonna start by connecting the bare end to our Orion's output terminals. And you can use ferrules on this connector, that is optional. We do include ferrules in the kit, but I know many of you do not own a ferrule crimper. So first we're gonna install our MRBF fuse on the battery's positive terminal. And any other factory wires can go right there back on top of that portion of the terminal. Use the 40 amp fuse that's included and land the red wire right on top of the fuse. And you can land the negative right on the battery terminal. Now we're gonna connect our 24 volt batteries in parallel and then plug them in. Parallel wiring for your batteries is not included in the kit because we don't know how many batteries you have or how far apart they might be. However, the main battery cable is included in the kit. Included in the kit is a four foot long cable. If you need a longer cable, we sell extensions as well. And before you plug it in, make sure the battery disconnect is still turned off. Now that we're ready to turn it on, let's start with the battery switch. Next comes the solar breaker. and then the inverter switch on its bottom gets flipped to on. We're then going to take the HDMI and USB that are included with the touchscreen and plug them into the servo. Once your system's booted up, you should see all the lights either flashing, blinking, or you know, solid illuminated like the inverter light. Your touch screen should be on and showing you some information. What I would recommend is go to settings, scroll to Wi-Fi, and then connect it to your local network. That way we have remote access to help you troubleshoot or monitor your system if anything comes up. Now that your system's up and running, remember we did all the programming for you so you don't need to program anything. What I would suggest is doing a little bit of testing to make sure it's working as expected. Um, first thing I'm gonna check is that the Orion smart charger is charging the 12 volt battery. You can log into the Bluetooth for the Orion and check this, or you can put your amp clamp around this red wire. You can also, if you don't have an amp clamp and you don't want to open up your phone and look at the Bluetooth, you can check that the voltage of your 12 volt battery is rising. So mine is almost completely full. It's at 14.14 right now and slowly rising. So that is good to go. The next thing we're gonna do for testing is to plug in our heat gun or any other large appliance to an AC outlet in your RV. We're gonna run this for about 15 minutes and then we're gonna double check all the connection points with our fingers touching near the ends of the wire, but not on the exposed metal portions. 
we're gonna make sure that the connections aren't getting too hot. We should be able to leave our fingers on any point for at least two to three seconds. And that's a good test to know it's in the right temperature range. All right, so I've had that running for about 15 minutes. Now I'm checking the connection points. None of them are very warm at all, so that's great news. You'll want to make sure your solar power is indeed powering the system. You can check this, of course, by logging into the Bluetooth for the charge controller, or you can amp clamp either of your solar wires, but you can also see the solar production here on the screen. Ours is zero because we're indoors right now. Last but not least, let's plug your RV into shore power or start your generator and make sure that it starts charging the batteries. So as you can see, we are now bulk charging from the grid. Now, if you plug it in and it doesn't start charging right away, remember this might take up to two minutes to start charging. If you have any questions about the pre-wired boards or need help selecting the right one for your RV, feel free to call us.